Uh, good morning and welcome to the preview for the weekend racing. Uh, we go to Flemington for the big sprint. Uh, not a bad race interest there with a couple of two-year-olds they've thrown in. I don't know why, but uh, we haven't seen that sort of thing for about 20, 30 years. So uh, interesting that they've done that. Um, there's a big six jackpot guaranteed one million, so we'll be participating in that. There's also a, a, a TT jackpot in New Zealand, about 350,000 carried over. Now, they're not betting much into this. Uh, they'll probably be lucky if they invest 50 to 100,000. So we'll play, but only for a very small lick at that, just in case we can steal something out of the pot. Um, not easy races over there. And uh, I don't know. It's, it's worth it's worth a small investment. We're not going to go overboard there just yet. If the pots start to get up around the the million dollar mark or a couple of million, well, then we might have a decent lash. But at this stage, we're just playing more for a a, uh, a look see and see how they uh, participate. Gone through most of the program for Saturday. Um, Ascot race eight. Um, Ringmeister had a drawn a barrier. Would have gone for this. It's ready to win. Barrier 16, I'd be wanting to get 12 or 15 to 1 before I poke the nose in on it at that price. Especially from that draw, it's going to get trapped out wide. Um, I've had a couple of licks at Cooper Claim over the recent starts. Jockey change now. Uh, if they bet 20, 20, 25 to 1 or longer, I'll have something on it. Other than that, I won't touch it. Um, it's not a race I like, but it's just the prices might get me in. No, at a price, and keep in mind, I'm tipping these at uh, um, what I would perceive to be good value betting if they're better than 12 or 15 to 1 Ringmeister and better than 20, 25 to 1 Copa Claim. Under that, I wouldn't touch either. Let them win. Um, so Ascot Race 8, 12 and 6. Um, don't like anything at the Durban meeting. Uh, the Ellerslie meeting, yeah, it's an interesting meeting, this one. There's a couple running around here that have, uh, we've seen before. In race three, uh, Klitschko. Um, good run last start. It's given it six weeks off. Track work's been good. It looks ready to go. I think it'll be hard to beat. Ellerslie race three, number six, Klitschko. Uh... We go to Ellerslie race five, number one, Kalani Kin, Kalani Kid. Um, significant riding change here, Innes goes on. I think this will be hard to beat. The barrier is no help, but at six or seven or eight to one, I'd be happy to have a go at it. Uh, Ellerslie five, number one, Kalani Kid. That's probably it for that meeting. Um, now we get to the Flemington card. The six up starts at race four. Got it down to only six chances to include in the first leg. 11, 4, 7, 2, 8 and 13. It's an interesting race. They'll probably be the only ones realistically in the market. Um, haven't really signaled or singled any of these out. King Buddy, I think... Uh, it's run a million only, which is good. Um, the long straight here will probably help it. It'll be charging home. Tigerland's an interesting one. Coming out of that red-hot trial behind Lankin Ruby. The form out of that's terrific. And um, pretty smart horse, this. So uh, I think this might be uh, might be one that uh, could have a bit of uh, upside going forward. But they look the ones we're going to take in the first leg. 11, 4, 7, 2, 8 and 13. Go to the second leg. Uh, I think there's realistically four winning chances here. Five girl in flight, four scratchy bottom, three sensibility, <clears throat> and one solicit. The only one that I'm considering putting in is the two key side. Um, it's run in Sydney was good. He sat us at the back of the field on a slow tempo. He was sleeping there. They took off and he was still there. Uh, came home nicely late. <clears throat> now they could have stayed in Sydney in a easier race. They've decided to come here, so that might be a bit of a guide. At 15 or 20 to 1, I think we're probably compelled to put it in because if it happens to get up, it's going to knock most of them out. Um, so probably uh, we'll finish up with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the second leg. We go to race 6. 
Uh, I think we're probably going to split the ticket here. Uh, four and six is the main two on the main ticket. I think uh, Hucklebuck and the quarterback, I think one of those two is probably going to be hard, hardest to beat in this race. Of the rest, there's probably four others that we would have to include. One Polanski off a reasonable trial. 1,400 first up is probably um, more suitable than its previous first up preparation, so I think that's going to help. Uh, two criterion off a reasonable trial. It's got to go in. Uh, Kushidashi and Prince Arata, that thief. But I suppose you've got to include it. Um, but four and six, the main goes. Chances to one, two, seven, and 11. We get to the main race. Tough race, this. Bit of speed. They put the two-year-olds in here. We haven't seen that for 20 or 30 years. They don't run in this race, even with the 10 to 12 kilo pulling the weights. Uh, they're just too immature. And why they would even consider starting them, I don't know. The trainer at Birdwire says he's going to use this as a guide whether he starts it in the Blue Diamond. I think he's yanked his chain himself personally. But uh, anyway, with 46 kilos, I think it's going to help us. i uh, found a couple here that will be running on. And uh, I think Birdwire might help um, bring Switzerland and go and drive it nuts. I'm hoping that's what's going to happen. Um, Got it down to six chances, of which two of them I've backed this morning at big prices. Um, the 10, the 1, the 7, they're, the, they're obviously chances, as is the 8, Snitzerland. They're the ones that everyone's going to have. The two Smokies that I've got are the five unpretentious coming out of that red-eye trial. Now, it's more a 1,200-metre horse, but I think with the tempo here, it'll be storming home, and it runs well this track. So, likes the straight. And... I backed African Pulse at uh, 67 and 51 dollars this morning. I think that's massive overs for this horse. Its first up runs better than it looks. Goes terrific this distance down the straight. I think uh, if this, if we can happen to get this one over the line tomorrow, uh, we're probably going to be the only ones left going into the last two legs of the six up. And um, on top of that, it'll be a decent result on the straight out. So. We will be taking six, but we'll be pushing hard for five and six to win the race for us at big prices. <coughs> Excuse me. Ten, one, seven, five, eight, and six go in for us. We go to race eight. Not a lot of depth in this race. Got it down to four main chances. Seven, Great Lane. Eight, Are There Any? One, Backstead, and two, Nevis. I think they're the only four we'll take here. Uh, don't really like anything else. And we go to the last... And again, I've got this one down to four chances as well. Uh, I think Club Command, terrific record this track and distance. Very, very hard to beat. Um, the Circles, if it gets the bludge run in front like it did last time, might be hard to run down. Uh, hey, Lil was a good run first up. If it goes forward from that, it'll be in the finish. And the Nine Desert Journey, this is my Smokey. Um, we've ridden like a complete black first up. They got rid of him, put a decent rider on it, dropped some heap of weight. Got a beautiful draw. It's going to sit on the speed. And uh, it's my knockout horse. Must go in. Number nine, Desert Journey. We'll take two, eight, nine, and 11 in the last. Um, don't like any of the other Aussie meetings. We go to Pukikura where the uh, TT jackpot is. First leg, pretty difficult. I've got it down to eight chances. Not sure whether we've got a banker here or not at this stage. Um, I'll have a closer look, see what the track conditions are like in the morning. I'm sort of tempted to go eight all ways here. It's a pretty tough race. They've all got a, all got some form. Um, but there's a couple of them here that we've got in the eight of the price. One of them gets up, it would be a decent result. Uh, got it down to two, four, nine, seven, eleven, eight, one, and three. We go to the middle leg. I think here's where we can go pretty skinny. Most of these can't walk one of these special maiden type races where they can win it out of tracks and they don't count and it's a special conditions race. I think uh, one and three look uh, better than these. Um, the three was a good win last start. He's he was well back, took off, uh, got left in front and then just kept going. It's won by a couple of lengths. Does that. Repeats that run at the win. Um, the only other ones I give him much hope to are the 2, the 3, the 6, the 11 and the 4. But it's almost a, a, well, it's a banker probably with the 3. It could even be a double banker 1-3 with the 
with four or five horses. Not many chances in this. Uh, three, one, two, six, four, eleven. And we go to the last. Again, not a race with a lot of chances. Um, Miss Herb, well drawn. Now, this was nominated for a race on Saturday. To, um, yeah, another race, I think, at Ellerslie, and they've elected to come here. So that might be a bit of a guide. Uh, the two big Opal, good win last start, must go in. Teddy Trinkle Toes, significant riding change here. I think that's going to help. Not a lot of chances for me in this race. Uh, I've got it down to one and two is the main chances with five, then chances to three, eight, seven, and four. So it's an interesting card. I think there's a, uh, a chance there. We'll probably have a banker in the last, or we might have a... Uh, a five always in the last. It's an interesting day's racing. I uh, hope you have some joy. The Rose Hill card, as usual, Sydney is serving up complete and utter rubbish. Um, I don't know where I don't know what it is with their racing now, but I mean when you look at uh, eight runners, eight runners, seven, eight, six. I mean six runners on a Saturday for God's sake. Uh, at the what they call uh, the premier racing state, you know, premier my ass. Um, unless they're hiding all their horses for when um, uh, for the autumn carnival, uh, there doesn't appear to be any logic to what they've done to their racing there. They have destroyed it completely in the last two years. They've got an entire card here with one race, only one race that's got more than eight runners. I mean, for a Saturday meeting in the city metro, that is just absolute disgrace. Uh, they might as well not run them. If you want to punt there, good luck. Um, me, I've given up punting in Sydney. I won't touch the place unless I have to. If I find something at a price, I might have a bet. But uh, it's been a while since I've, I've really had a decent go in Sydney, and it'll be probably wait until the big races. I don't mind betting Doncaster and things like that get big fields, good value. I think we just wait for the carnival there and uh, let Mr. Balandis do whatever he likes. He seems to be the uh, the genius. He built that fantastic grandstand for him and his mates um, and the nine other people that seem to go to the races every week. So not sure what's going on there, guys. So if you like betting in Sydney and like backing favourites and should take in the shorts, well, I suppose it's not too bad, but uh, it's not my cup of tea. Good luck on the weekend. Um, we go to Sha Tin on Sunday. As you can see, I'm well and truly rugged up. It's about four degrees here. It's freezing. Um, hopefully, by Sunday, it'll get to six or eight degrees and we'll be able to go outside. Um, a couple of the boys that are coming up the, next week from Melbourne. I've already sent them an email, told them to rug up. Uh, although Melbourne, they should be used to the cold. Uh, there's a jackpot on Sunday, I think, in the TT, and we'll have a look at a couple of the quartets, uh, but I'll have a closer look at that and do the preview for that on Saturday afternoon. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, if you're playing on the weekend, good luck and great success to you.